Yao Yao is probably the first good four star we've had in a while. Don't get me wrong, we've had functional four stars and we've had four stars that are fully functional at Constellation 6, but there aren't very many four stars we've had at C0 that feel as complete and functional as Yao Yao. Whether that's because Yao Yao fills a niche that we really needed filled or because of any other reasons, I can't say for sure, but I'm glad that we finally have a four star that feels amazing to play right out of the box. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over exactly how to play Yao Yao what she does and how to build her. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to let me know down in the comments below or by liking the video, consider subscribing to the channel. And with all of that being said, my name is Braxophone and let's talk about Yao Yao. As some of you might know, we've needed a Dendro healer for a pretty long time. Dendro teams are often lacking a healer unless you're using someone like Kuki Shinobu or Kokomi. So Yao Yao's release has really helped fix that issue. First off, Yao Yao's elemental skill throws out a Jade Rabbit that deals Dendro damage, but can also heal allies. Now it throws out these white radishes, and these white radishes will prioritize your health until you're above 70% HP, and then they'll focus on hitting enemies. These radishes have a very small AoE, but you can technically heal off of them if they hit an enemy for damage and you're right there next to them. On top of that, her second ascension passive makes it so that within the AoE of her rabbit, you gain a small portion of healing based off of her max HP. Now, unfortunately, Yao Yao has a special internal cooldown where it's only based on time and not the amount of hits that you do. For a majority of characters, you can reapply an element once every two and a half seconds or once every three hits. However, in Yao Yao's case, the hit rule doesn't apply. But because that targeting on her elemental skill is randomized, it means that you're going to be likely hitting multiple different enemies because internal cooldown is based on the enemy that's hit rather than the character applying it. Meaning that if you hit three different enemies, they can all get Dendro applied to them even if the time hasn't elapsed. It's the same reason that Yaimiko's turrets are considered good electro application. Yao Yao also generates one Dendro particle per hit with her skill with a small pause every three hits or so where no particle is generated. Particles are super important because she is going to need a lot of energy to use her elemental burst. Her burst costs 80 energy and it has about a 20 second cooldown. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna throw out up to three rabbits that deal dendro damage and heal your whole team, sort of like a burst heal. The reason I call it a burst heal is because the duration of the rabbits is not actually that long and you're healing a lot during that small interval. The healing that hits your entire team during her burst is actually very, very strong and makes her a super reliable dendro healer if you can manage to get her burst up. During her burst, Yao Yao also gets movement speed and dendro resistance buffs, but it's honestly not really that useful since she's just not going to be on the field a lot of the time, but that said, it will stop her from taking as much self-dendro damage from the different dendro reactions. As far as her first passive goes, it doesn't really do much. It makes it so that Yao Yao throws extra radishes when sprinting, jumping, or running, but it's only active during her burst, and ideally she's not on the field anyways, so it doesn't get that much value. As far as talent priority goes, you're going to want to level her skill and burst together because they're both part of her healing kit, and both are important. Now, as I discussed earlier, she's able to generate quite a few dendro particles over time, but the downside to that is that Yao Yao is not on the field to pick up those dendro particles most of the time, which means that she is going to need a lot of energy recharge to be able to get her 80 cost burst up. So next up, let's talk about weapons and how to sort of mitigate that. So because Yao Yao isn't a character that's meant to deal a ton of personal damage, her weapon selection is actually pretty dang easy. While some folks might try to force Yao Yao to deal damage, and while you can do that, in this guide I'm going to focus on how to make her the best support she can be, which is her primary role. Yao Yao's burst has an 80 energy cost, and that means that she needs a lot of energy and a lot of particles in order to be able to use her burst frequently. And her burst is incredibly strong, it heals your entire team for quite a lot of HP, while also dealing some damage damage and allowing you to apply dendro to different enemies. While it's not something that you have to have up on cooldown every single time, it can be nice to have, and for that reason, I'm going to recommend that you build her with support weapons, and in Polearm's case, that's going to be a weapon like Favonius Lance. Favonius Lance will allow you to generate white particles that you can feed into either your teammates or into Yao Yao whenever she crits. Now the downside is that Yao Yao is not going to be on field that much, and she's not going to have very many opportunities to crit, but we can talk about how to sort of fix that 
in the artifact section. In the meantime, I highly recommend Favonius Lance if you have it. If you don't have it, you have a couple other options though. You can go for any other energy recharge polearm, like Skyward Spine, or if you're free to play, you can use Prototype Star Glitter. Typically speaking, you don't really need Elemental Mastery on Yao Yao unless you're using her in a Bloom team, which means that Elemental Mastery polearms like Dragon's Bane and Katang Cross are not that important. But with that said, if you are going to use her in a Nilu Bloom team, for example, you can give her an Elemental Mastery weapon as well, and that'll help increase the Bloom damage that she triggers. Overall, though, I cannot recommend Favonius Lance enough if you have access to it. It's an amazing weapon. It's going to help battery her and the rest of your team and just make your energy costs feel a lot better. And again, if you don't have that or any other energy recharge pole arms, I highly recommend just crafting yourself prototype star glitter in order to help you out. Lastly, if you don't have any other options, you can give her black tassel for more healing, but just know that energy recharge is going to be a bit of a better stat on her than HP at this point. When you're looking at artifacts for Yao Yao, you actually have quite a few options. First off, as we always do, let's talk about before AR-45. Before you hit AR-45, you shouldn't really waste a bunch of res in farming anything, because you're gonna end up replacing all those artifacts later. However, if you're just looking for something to use on Yao Yao at the moment, you can give her anything with energy recharge or HP percent. Instructors can be a really good 4-piece set for her just before you get to endgame, because it's a good support set in general, and you should have a bunch of pieces of it just by walking around. The main thing you need to focus on is just energy recharge sands, HP Goblet and an HP or healing bonus circlet on Yao Yao, at least before you can start farming for better artifacts. Now, once you get to AR 45, you have a whole bunch of set options. Now, Yao Yao's personal damage is honestly pretty bad and gets carried by spread if you're going to do any damage with her at all. So, if you want to get a lot of value out of her, you're going to want to build her as a support. Now, what I recommend more than anything else is using four piece Deepwood Memories if you don't have that on any other character. Deepwood Memories gets triggered whenever you hit an enemy with an elemental skill, and because her elemental skill skill is constantly dealing damage to enemies, you're constantly refreshing the deep wood effect, even off field. Elemental bursts can also trigger deep wood, but you honestly don't even really need her burst in order to make deep wood work. It synergizes with her really well, and so if you don't have it on any other dendro characters in your party, I highly recommend it on her. But if you're running deep wood on another character, you can also opt to use something like four piece tenacity of the mill lift. Four piece tenacity is going to give you a shield and attack buff whenever your elemental skill hits enemies, and that buff will only last for three seconds, but since Yao Yao's constantly hitting with her elemental skill, you should be able to keep the buff up most of the time. Now, in general, having the 40% Dendro Resistant Shred is going to be more important, but Tenacity also gives you HP as well, which is what Yao Yao scales off of. Lastly, 4-piece Instructors is actually decent on her as well. The only issue with Instructors is that the stats are a bit lower, and Yao Yao will need quite a bit of energy recharge in order to be completely functional if you want to get her burst off on a regular cooldown. But just be aware that the option is there. Before we talk about energy recharge, I want to quickly go over why we're not using the clam set with her. So Yao Yao is a healer and she's going to be constantly healing up your character that's on field and then when you use her burst you're going to heal up your whole party for quite a bit of HP. However, her healing is not actually that great unless you're in her burst and her burst only lasts for a short time. So the damage output you would get from clam even with the healing bonus that it provides is not that significant and makes it not nearly as worth running as something like Deepwood or Tenacity of the Millith if you choose to run that. Basically, her healing isn't enough to justify using the clam set. Now, as I mentioned before, Yao Yao needs a lot of energy recharge to function. Don't worry, she's not as monstrous as Faruzan when it comes to energy recharge, but she still does want a fair bit. Remember, she's not going to be picking up the dendro particles herself because she's going to be off field a lot of the time that you're generating them. What that means is you're going to either want to play her with a second dendro or just build her with a ton of ER. If you can manage it, I would suggest anywhere between 180 and 200% energy recharge with Favonius Lance if you want to be able to use her burst on cooldown. That said, she heals on her elemental skill as well, so if you can't use her burst on cooldown, it's not the end of the world. It's also worth noting that if you're running her as a solo dendro, or if you're not running Favonius Lance, you may need even more than 200% ER. That said, energy recharge can vary by the team and by the content, just keep in mind that she does need quite a bit of it if you want to spam her burst on cooldown. For Yao Yao, I'd like to suggest the following stats. Energy recharge on sands, HP percent on goblet, and healing bonus on her circlet. This will net you almost maximum healing, 
with some energy recharge to also help you use your burst more, which should outweigh the value of just using her skill and never using her burst. That said, if you're running Favonius Lance, you do need to get some crits to be able to proc the effect and get energy out of her. So you can replace a healing bonus circlet with a crit rate circlet, and you should still get decent healing out of her. Alternatively, you could just try to go for crit rate in the substats, and that might be enough for you. And last but not least, if you're using a Nilu Bloom team where you're going to be having her proccing some of the blooms, you can give her triple elemental mastery, and that's totally fine. If you do have that situation, you can also give her gilded dreams if someone else has deep wood. Speaking of Nilo Bloom, let's go talk about Yaya's team building. finally able to play a Dendro healer. This means we're no longer shackled to characters like Kokomi and Kuki, who were dedicated healers for things like Hyper Bloom, and Kokomi is a dedicated healer for Burgeon as well. Now we have a Dendro healer, so we don't have to run those units. This also means that we can officially have a healer and aggravate teams while running two electro damage dealers. For example, we can run an I'll Hate Them team with Fischl and Yaimiko, who can both output a ton of electro damage, and I'll Hate Them can output a ton of Dendro damage. But alternatively to that, you can also run Kuching now, and this this is also super strong and you don't have to worry about Kuching dying. You can also run someone like Sino and you now have Yao Yao to heal Sino as well. So lots of great reasons for Yao Yao to be played in new Dendro stuff. Alternatively, when you're building a Yao Yao team, you could also do Hyper Bloom. And in this case, you no longer need characters like Kokumi or Kuki for that. You could build Elemental Mastery Lisa with some energy recharge stats as well. So that way you can use her burst and she'll be able to lower enemy defense. And that's going to be really beneficial for the rest of this team. It's going to help Singchal do more damage. It's going to help all of your hyper blooms deal more damage and it's just really good and you don't even have to use lisa you honestly could stick with kuki if you wanted to uh you could play other electro characters that could fit into this niche like if you wanted to you could just play on field kuching or you could play someone like em raiden and that also works well the main point being that you don't need kokomi here and then for something like virgin as i said before you no longer need kokomi kokomi is an amazing unit and she's wonderful but yeah yeah can fill that healer spot that she would normally fill and now you just have a completely different virgin team that's more free to play friendly, albeit we have Nahida here, but you could just slot in something like Dendro MC if you needed to, and as long as you're applying Hydro to the flower before the Pyro, it should be fine and last the entire time. And lastly, you have the option for Nilu Bloom teams, and Nilu Bloom teams have always been interesting because a lot of people would argue to have either three Hydro and one Dendro, or three Dendro and one Hydro. But the problem with a three Dendro, one Hydro is that the Hydro is going to be triggering most of the Blooms, and the Hydro is Nilu here, and Nilu is not going to be built full Elemental Mastery, so I Ideally, you would just have two other Hydro units and then a Dendro. And while Yao Yao shouldn't be the solo Dendro in that, and you would run a 2-2 team, it means that you can run Nilu teams without Kokomi pretty reliably. You can run someone like Singcho instead, and now Nilu is super viable without requiring the other 5-star that was Kokomi here. You can also put in DMC or something else here, and now your Nilu team is very strong and free-to-play accessible. So overall, Yao Yao is a really great addition to this game, and I really enjoy that we have so many more team options for her now that don't restrict you to certain healing characters. So Next up, I want to go ahead and talk about Yayo's Constellations and why I think she's such a great unit outside of her baseline kit. So one thing that I really like about Yao Yao is that they didn't make her completely constellation reliant. Let me show you what I mean by telling you guys what the constellations do, and then we can talk about how good they are. Yao Yao's first constellation basically makes it so that when a radish explodes, any of your characters that are in that small AoE that causes the healing to trigger will also gain a 15% danger damage bonus for 8 seconds and also have 15 stamina restored to them. Now personally, I really like the stamina idea because there's so many characters that can run out of stamina when just spamming charged attacks, but I I don't think Yao Yao's kit is the one we're looking for to do this. It can only activate once every five seconds anyway, so it's not that influential, but it's just kind of a cool gameplay mechanic that I hope we see more of in the future. Constellation 2 is just going to give her some energy back when she's in her burst. At maximum, you're getting about 15 energy back this way, which can be pretty helpful and lower your energy requirements a little bit. Constellation 3 is going to increase her skill by 3. Constellation 4 is going to give Yao Yao some elemental mastery based on her max HP whenever she uses her skill or burst. This can be extremely 
extremely helpful for something like Nilu Bloom teams. But outside of that, since she's not going to be triggering a majority of the reactions, it can end up being a little less useful. Constellation 5 increases our burst by 3, and Constellation 6 is basically just some more damage and healing increases. After two radishes are thrown, a third one's going to be thrown that's going to deal some more dendro damage based on Yaya's attack, and restore even more HP for the character that's on the field based on Yaya's max HP. Now, when I said earlier that I like that Yaya wasn't a constellation dependent character, I meant that these constellations, while they all still are decent, she was packaged as a fully functional character at C0. Though these constellations can make Yao Yao a better unit, she doesn't need any of them to do her job, and that's what I really like about this design. So don't feel pressured to pull for her for constellations because you don't really need them as much. And with all of the constellation talk over, that's basically it for this guide. Hopefully this video helped you build your Yao Yao and understand how to use her to some extent. She's actually a really good four star, and I'm glad to see that we have a good dendro healer accessible even to free to play players. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like so that YouTube knows it doesn't suck and consider subscribing to the channel. That way you can be in the loop whenever I upload a new video. I also go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone and sometimes I post on Twitter if you want to stay updated. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you next time.